Welcome into the 49ers report right here on Chat Sports. I am your host, Chase Senior. Hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at Chase underscore Senior. Coming up on today's show, my final 53 man roster projection before the Niners are set to cut down their roster on Tuesday. But first, Niners with a really impressive preseason finale victory, stopping the Las Vegas Raiders in Santa Clara 34 10. So let's recap the game real quick. I thought the defense was really good. This past week in practice, Kyle Shanahan was experimenting and and tinkering with putting both Jimmy Garoppolo and Trey Lance in with that first team offense, taking both of the quarterbacks in and out of the lineup to see how they would fare in different packages. So we saw Lance and Garoppolo early. Lance looking somewhat raw. As for the running backs, Jamichael Hasty. Really good game, six carries, 55 yards, and two touchdowns. Wayne Gallman was also very good. Trent Sherfield continued to be a training camp and preseason star for this team. And the Niners' defense all day was just getting after it. So with that, let me pose this question, Niner gang. Your one-word reaction to the Niners' dominant win over the Raiders. We were able to show that fan base that we still run the Bay. And I'm not making too much of the game because the Raiders didn't really play any of their marquee players, but still... A very impressive win. My one word reaction, dominant. Let's get to this 49ers roster projection. We start off with the quarterback position. Really nothing crazy here. Now, I thought about Kyle Shanahan going with two quarterbacks, but because I think we're going to be seeing a two-quarterback system with both Jimmy G and Trey Lance, it's safe to have a number three on this team with Nate Sudfeld. I don't think he's really done anything in the preseason to prove that he should make this team. I just think it's Kyle Shanahan erring on the side of caution. From quarterbacks to running backs, this is one of the most deepest and loaded position groups on this team. And all throughout the preseason and training camp, we've been going back and forth as to how many running backs Kyle Shanahan would keep on the final roster. I'm going with five as of now. Raheem Mostert, who looked really good against the Raiders. Trey Sermon, who ran with some pop as well. Wayne Gallman gives you a dual threat and experience running back. I thought he was really good with the Giants last year. Jamichael Hasty proved to be, I think, one of the most physical runners on this team and ran with so much purpose throughout the preseason. A 35-yard touchdown against the Raiders was really the big splash play. And I do have Elijah Mitchell coming off that hip injury making the roster on the right side of the bubble. You look at what Hasty did against the Raiders. I thought he was excellent. And I think that you can use a guy like this throughout the course of the regular season when it's probably expected that running backs are going to go down. Six carries, 55 yards, almost 10 yards per average uh, when he touched the rock, and two touchdowns. And he continues to sniff out the end zone. It'd be a very good physical red zone threat for Kyle Shanahan's outside zone scheme. Of course, you have to throw the juice man in there as well. The highest paid fullback in the history of the National Football League. Kyle Juszczyk adds so many important elements to your offense. Paving open running lanes for your running backs. I think he can go out wide and catch passes. We saw that one-on-one -on -one drill when he outran Fred Warner and caught a pass ahead of Fred Warner, who's one of the best coverage linebackers in the league. Can't wait to see what Juice is able to bring to the table here in 2021, both in the run game as well as in the pass game as a Swiss Army knife for Shanahan to use at his disposal. I think the 49ers are going to keep five running backs. It could be four to open up a roster spot elsewhere. Sometimes head coaches go with six. How many running backs do you think Kyle Shanahan is going to keep? Get your predictions in in the comment section down, down below. As for the wide receivers, some few easy decisions to make here. Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, Trent Sherfield catapulted his way up the roster throughout practice training camp and the preseason. I think he is a viable, but not just viable, I think he is a go-to legitimate number three or number four wide receiver, not just on this roster, in the National Football League. He makes this roster going away. The other guys, Mohamed Sanu, you put him in the slot as a veteran wide receiver who has a ton of experience and has produced a lot for some really good teams. I think he's a shoe in to make this team as well. The last two spots, they're really up for grabs. Jawan Jennings, he dropped a would-be touchdown pass from Trey Lance. It was certainly a laser from short distance approaching the goal line, but made a nice catch uh, later on in that game reaching behind him to catch another bullet from Trey. I think he makes this team because he's in his mid-20s ahead of a guy like Travis Benjamin who went down against the Raiders with that concussion. And yes, maybe the most talked about player 
going into these final roster cutdowns, Jalen Hurd. I have him making the team because he simply played against the Las Vegas Raiders and produced in an okay fashion. I thought he looked slow, but that's to be expected when you're looking at a guy who hasn't played in a game in the NFL since 2019. Caught a couple of passes, though. He got a carry on a jet sweep and wasn't able to get around the edge, but both Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch think that he has a lot of value. They say that our wide receiving core is better with him, and because he was able to stay on the field and produce to at least some little degree, I think Jalen Hurd is going to make this team. Notable wide receiver cuts and moves. Travis Benjamin goes down with a concussion. I think that affects his standing making this team. Nasimba Webster, he gives this team some punt returning experience. I think you can put him back there on kick returns as well. Has some burst, so I wouldn't be surprised if he makes this team, but not making my cut for the 53. Richie James can't play for the Niners this year. He can play elsewhere uh, if he's able to reach an injury settlement with the 49ers. He has to undergo knee surgery, and River Craycraft was brought in to play in place of Richie James on Sunday, but he's just not simply good enough to make what is a very, very talented and deep wide receiving core. Do you think Jalen Hurd is going to make the final 53? Let me know right now. Type Y for yes, type N for no. It's the great debate going on in Santa Clara right now. You let me know in the comment section. 49ers report is made possible today thanks to our sportsbook partner, BetUS. Football season is finally here. The regular season is right around the corner. Not a better time to lay down some wagers than right now thanks to our sportsbook partner, BetUS. 125% deposit bonus, meaning if you go to chatsports.com slash 49bet and enter the promo code Niners125, you get $225 back. I'm telling you. FanDuel, DraftKings, they're not giving you this deal. Maybe you want to put some money down on regular season win totals in the loaded NFC West. 49ers over or under 10.5. I kind of like it. Rams at 10.5 as well. Seattle Seahawks over or under set at 10. Arizona Cardinals bottom of the basement at 8.5. That goes to show you. <laughs> that the NFC West is going to be absolutely ridiculous. A couple more position groups. Couple more position groups to get to here on the offensive side of the football. Tight ends now. Uh, George Kittle, Ross Dwelly, Charlie Warner, they're going to be your three tight ends. We know that tight ends are very important in Kyle Shanahan's offense. Jordan Matthews, Michael Pruitt, they're not going to make this team. As for the offensive linemen, I think from left tackle to right tackle across the board, the Niners might have the best offensive line in the NFC West. This starting group is very, very good. Trent Williams was pancaking cats against the Raiders. Lakin Tomlinson is a good guard. Alex Mack is an all-pro caliber center. Daniel Brunskill, very good at right guard. Mike McGlinchey has to get better at right tackle for this offensive line for sure. The depth, I certainly have concerns about the depth for this offensive line. But the starters, as long as they can stay healthy, I think they're going to open up some running lanes for the running backs, but most importantly, they're going to be able to keep Jimmy Garoppolo and Trey Lance upright because, once again, I think we're going to be seeing a two-quarterback system play out for Kyle Shanahan. Other offensive linemen making this team real quick. Jalen Moore, you drafted him out of Western Michigan, has some positional versatility and value there because he can play both guard and left tackle. Aaron Banks has to improve, didn't have a good training camp or preseason debut against KC, but you drafted him in the second round. He has to make this team. And then Colton McKivitz, I have him on the right side of the bubble as well. Notable off offensive cuts and moves. Uh, Jordan Matthews, maybe he goes onto the practice squad to continue his development going from wide receiver to tight end. I would actually really like that. Don't really care if you bring Michael Pruitt back or not. Sean Coleman looked pretty solid in place of Jalen Moore. I think he could easily make this team too. Alfredo G uh, Gutierrez, he's part of the International Pathway Program. So he's not going to make the 53-man roster, but you can continue to develop him because he is part of that international pathway program. Grade the 49ers offensive line for me right now. I think it's like a B plus, but as for their depth, I would go with a C with their depth, but you grade the 49ers offensive line for me A, B, C, D, or F. 
49ers report is growing rapidly, so you should hop on board and be part of the 49er faithful family because we're getting closer and closer to 40,000 subscribers. Daily videos, mailbags, live shows, watch parties, your latest news and rumors on your 49ers. Hit that red subscribe button down below or go to youtube.com slash 49ers TV. Let's shift over to the defensive end of the football. This defensive line, no, do no joke, keeping it 100 here, could be one of the best, most lethal, most ferocious, and deepest defensive lines in the National Football League. Nick Bosa, Eric Armstead, Javon Kinlaw, Samson Ebucom, DJ Jones, all shoe wins to make this team. So too, in my opinion, are Contavious Street, D. Ford, Zach Kerr, Arden Key, and Kevin Givens. You're looking at five backups there that are capable of being starters elsewhere on other teams across the league. And when I say that the Niners' defensive front is 8 to 10 guys deep of some very, very talented defensive linemen, that's not a hyperbolic statement. I thought what John Lynch said the other day on the radio in San Francisco on KNBR about them fielding trade calls for some of those defensive linemen is totally true because there are needy teams out there across the league who would love to use some either starters or depth pieces along the defensive line. D'Amico Ryan's at his disposal. He can trot out guys who are 8 to 10 deep who can all make respective plays happen along this defensive line and be effective in the run game as well as in the pass game getting after opposing quarterbacks, which is a great situation to have because that means that your back end can be average or get by as long as that defensive line is generating pressure on the quarterback. So tell me what this one, the 49ers defensive line ranks blank. Where at? Is it top 10? Top five? Is it first? Second? Third? Have some fun with this one and let me know where the 49ers defensive line ranks in the comment section down below. As for the linebackers, all pro Fred Warner leading this linebacking unit. Dre Greenlaw, I think he's going to have a really good season. Aziz Al-Shahir coming back from that early training camp injury. He looks to be back in 100% form. Marcel Harris, that experiment for him going from the defensive backfield to linebacker, it's looked really good so far because in the preseason, that transition has seemed somewhat seamless. And Demetrius Flanagan falls. Is he going to be able to beat out a guy like Jonas Griffith or Elijah Sullivan? That's going to be the big debate for Kyle Shanahan, John Lynch, D'Amico Ryans, and this defensive staff trying to figure out if Flanagan Foles is the guy to go with at linebacker more so than a guy like Elijah Sullivan or Jonas Griffith. But as of right now, my final roster projection, looking at some of these marquee defensive players, Darian Daniels doesn't make the team. Jonas Griffith doesn't make the team. I'd love to see him back on the practice squad for a second consecutive season. Maurice Hurst, because of that high right ankle sprain, is going to go on PUP, meaning he's not going to be eligible to come back for the first six weeks of the season. And Jordan Willis is suspended, so he's out the first six games of the season. When he does come back, I think he too could be another good addition along this defensive front. Cornerbacks now, Jason Verrett. Emmanuel Mosley, Kaywan Williams, Ambry Thomas, Diamador Lenore, all safe players to make the team with the exception of Ambry Thomas. High round draft pick out of Michigan. I didn't think he looked ready to play throughout the preseason. Would not surprise me if the Niners decide to cut him and maybe bring back a more veteran safe option like Deontay Johnson or something like that. Your safeties, Jimmy Ward, Jaquaski Tart played well against the Raiders. He was looking spry on that turf toe. Very good news for this defense. Talanoa Hufanga has been one of the best stories throughout training camp. The rookie out of USC looks to be a steal coming out of the fifth round. And then Tavon Wilson also makes the team at the safety spot as well. So you go four deep at the safety position for this 49ers defense. As for this defensive back depth chart, it's kind of like the offensive line for me. The starters, very good. The depth pieces and the backups, I have some questions. Ambry Thomas has to be better. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets cut. You put him on the practice squad as a rookie. Other than that, though, I really like what Diamador Lenore and Talanoa Hufanga brought to this team. The close cuts could ha, -ha Clinton Dix after intercepting and picking off Nathan Peterman. Some good yards after the interception there. Could he make this team as a veteran option. I could see that coming into play. Jared Maiden was making plays two weeks ago against the Los Angeles Chargers. Wouldn't surprise me one iota if he cracks the roster as well. Dante Johnson, 
I think because he's a solid veteran, he could make the team too. As for Kai Nasu and Alexander Myers, look, these are bottom of the barrel options at this point. That's why I have them on the outside looking in for this final 53-man roster projection. How excited are you about this defense after seeing, especially this defensive line, get after opposing quarterbacks? Type V for very excited. Type E for, eh, they still have something to prove. Let me know right now. Lastly, the specialists, because kickers and punters, long snappers, they are people too, and they take up three roster spots on the final 53. Robbie Gold, still a very serviceable kicker. Mitch Wisnowski had a 75-yard punt against those fraud Raiders, and then Tabor Pepper is your long snapper. Those are the final three men to make this 53-man roster as the specialist. So who was I wrong about here? Because there are some close calls at the running back spot, offensive line, defensive line too. I mean, all across this roster, that's kind of a credit to how John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan, this front office and this organization has built things because this team from top to bottom is very, very deep. Let me know who I was wrong about here though.